In this presentation, we will take a look at part three of our example problem related to a private college, the second private college example problem we have taken a look at. We will proceed with the closing entries in this section. We will enter our journal entry on the left-hand side and then post it to our trial balance closing entry worksheet on the right. This is our information we have thus far in the worksheet. This is basically the adjusted trial balance where we will now enter the closing entries. It will be in order, assets in green, liabilities in orange, what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization here, the net assets section in light blue. Below that, we have the revenue or what would be revenue and expenses in a for-profit organization, what would be the income statement account, those temporary accounts, of those accounts that will close out to what would be equity in the for-profit organization here closing out to the net assets in our private college like in a for-profit type of organization our goal here is to make all these accounts that in the dark blue what would be similar to the income statement accounts go to zero closing them out to what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization here closing out to the net assets section we have the added complication of the fact that we have the items with restriction and without restriction with regards to the income items and we have those same type of categorizations of course with the net assets therefore we need to be able to, to close this out to the proper location either with or without restrictions so unlike in a for-profit organization which we might break out the closing process into four steps closing out revenue expenses then income summary then draws or retained earnings to a capital account or to retained earnings whether it's a corporation or a sole proprietor here we're going to group the revenue and expense accounts together in the journal entries but instead break out separate journal entries in the closing process as to whether they're going to be related to items with restrictions or without restrictions the first journal entry will be the largest type of journal entry because we're going to go with the items without restrictions which will include all income items that don't have restrictions as well as generally the expense items work are going to be included without restrictions as well so if we go through these we're going to say all right here's this um, 5 million 631 it does not have restrictions it has a credit balance therefore to make it go down we will do the opposite thing to it we will debit it then we have the tuition uh, and fees discount that has a debit balance it's in essence a contra revenue account therefore in order to make it go down we will do the opposite thing to it we will credit it then we have the uh, contributions without donor restrictions it has a credit balance we need to make it go down so we're going to do the opposite thing to it debiting it next we're going to jump down here to the auxiliary enterprise without donor restrictions that being because of obviously these income accounts do have restrictions so we're going to jump down here that one's a credit balance we're going to then debit it to make it go down to zero then we're going to go to all the expenses which don't have any restrictions and therefore included in this first journal entry that includes the instruction expense the academic support expense the student service expense uh, the uh, institutional support expense and the auxiliary enterprise we're going to debit all of those items as we see here making them go down to zero then we're going to jump down to these uh, unearned gain on investment without donor restrictions it's got a credit in it we're going to do the opposite thing to it debiting it to make it go to zero then of course we're going to have to have the plug type journal entry which is going to be if we were to take all the credits add them up and subtract them from all the debits adding up all the debits and subtract the two we would come up to a balance of the 283,740. that's going to be the credit which we're going to put to what would be the equity section in a for-profit organization would be uh, retained earnings in a corporation or capital in a partnership or a sole proprietor here net assets but to the subcategory of without donor restrictions posting this out let's see if it does what we expect it to do uh, what do we expect it to do well we expect it to make all these accounts on the income statement that are effective that have been included without restrictions go to zero and the difference then being going to the net asset account without restrictions all right let's see if that happens we're going to then go through this we're going to post this item which is the tuition and fees that brings this account down to zero we're then going to take a look at the tuition and fees discount bringing that item down to zero we then have the contributions without restrictions bringing that item down to zero 
we have the auxiliary expenses posting it out bringing it down to zero then we have all the expenses instruction academic student service uh, institutional support auxiliary bringing all of those amounts down to zero then we have the uh, unearned gain unearned gain posted bringing it down to zero and finally the difference being posted to the net assets without donor restrictions net assets without donor restrictions crediting it uh, making it go up in the credit direction so now we have a much smaller amount of accounts to work with of course we got these amounts that are zero we need to get these items down to zero now now we're going to be grouping this by the restricted category that is there we're going to take care of all the restrictions except for the endowment and then we'll do another one for the endowment so we're going to pick up this uh, 579 2 it has a credit we're going to debit it to make it go down to zero we've got the contributions with donor restrictions for time has a credit we're going to debit it to make it go down to zero we have the contributions with donor restrictions for the capital it's got a credit we're going to debit it to make it go down to zero the difference then going to the uh, net assets with restrictions so they're all different types of restrictions obviously which we'll have to be, keep be aware of however recording it to the net asset account we're going to record the net asset simply with restrictions posting this out then we're going to say that we, we're going to record these out of course which would be the uh, contributions for the grants here's that item making it go to zero we've got the time restriction here's that item making it go to zero and then we have the uh, capital campaign here making it go to zero the difference then going to net assets with donor restrictions up top that's going to be the credit that we see up top next we see that we're down to basically now the restrictions with the endowment we've got these two accounts we'll, we'll deal with later and then we have the restriction with the endowment we're now going to take care of the, the ones with the endowment. So we have the contributions with restrictions for the endowment. It has a credit in it. We're going to debit it to make it go down to zero. And then we have the unearned gain on investment with donor restrictions. It has a credit in it. We're going to debit it to make it go to zero. The difference between those two are the summing up, the credit balance between them. will go to the net assets with donor restrictions. So once again, grouping them together with the restrictions up top posting that out then we have the contributions with restrictions going down to zero as we would expect as we would like we have the unearned gain on investments with donor restrictions going down to zero and the difference then of course being posted to the net assets with donor restrictions then we've got these last two all we have are these last two down below you'll recall that the name of these accounts are net assets released satisfaction of purpose restriction with donor restriction and then the same thing without donor restriction the one without is actually on top and so what we want to do is, is make sure that we just match up the with or without down here to the with or without in the net asset account i would do that with two journal entries it's easier to me to think about this with two journal entries so i'm going to close out then the first one which has a credit in it i want to close that one out so i'm going to debit it making it go down to zero and then just make sure that i close that out to the proper net asset account just matching up the fact that i have without here and without here so those are going to be the same ones so if we can match that out we're going to say all right posting this then we're going to say that the uh, net assets released satisfaction of purpose is making this go down to zero the credit then going to the net assets without donor restrictions then we're going to have be left with the last number here which is the net assets released satisfaction of purpose restriction with the donor restriction it has a debit in it we need to make it go down therefore we're going to debit that and we're going to be uh, we're going to sorry we're going to make it go down so we're going to credit that and we're going to debit the net assets with donor restrictions again matching up the, the item with in the net assets and the item with with the with the net assets released account so then posting that out we have the debit in the net assets with donor restrictions that's going to be here bringing that amount down so it's coming out of the amount with restrictions and then we have the net assets released that's going to be down here it has a debit balance we're going to credit it making it go down to zero